ladies and gentlemen, we're just about to start. If you want to start taking your seats. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Janice Price, the CEO of the Luminato Festival. And I uh, have to open with a very special welcome to those who are watching us online via live stream. My uh, fabulous interactive marketing team have done a great job of really uh, making sure that we can stream this announcement today and reminding everyone that that's possible and putting out some great messaging around that today. So. Um, hello to those of you who are watching us at your desks or uh, at home or wherever. Um, I want to open, of course, by thanking the Sony Center for hosting us in this beautiful facility uh, to Dan Brambila and Mark Hammond and the whole Sony team um, for, for allowing us to be here. It's, it's really amazing to see all these friendly faces here as we announce the 2012 festival program. Each year, Luminato presents incredible homegrown talent alongside, alongside artists and events from across Canada and around the globe. And this year will be no different. Whether it's theater, dance, music, magic, literature, film, food, or visual arts, if you're an arts lover, Toronto is again the place to be this June. And I can say on behalf of all my festival colleagues who run festivals and events in June, please pray we get weather this good in June. It feels like summer today. It's a precursor, we hope. Luminato 6 marks a next chapter for our organization. Thanks to the support of audiences, our many partners, many of you in this room, our audiences, Luminato is no longer a newborn, but a festival that has made a name for itself as one of North America's must-attend events. The Luminato Festival, as you know, would not be possible without the incredible support of individuals, foundations, generous partners in the corporate, media, and public sectors who all believed in the Luminato vision. Um, many others will be mentioned and thanked later on, but I wanted to take a moment to thank, of course, in particular today, L'Oreal Canada, who has been our partner in creativity for the past six years, right from the beginning, and we're very happy to have Marie-José Lamont from uh, L'Oreal joining us here this morning. I'd also like to thank the province of Ontario, our founding government partner, Michel Coteau, parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport, is with us this morning. Thank you, Michelle. M Michael, <laughs> for being here. Sorry. Um, also, thanks, of course, to the Government of Canada and to the City of Toronto for their support. This year's Luminato has also been financially supported by the Ontario Cultural Attractions Fund, a program by the Government of Ontario through the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and, support, and Sport. And I'd also like to acknowledge the generous support and vision of Luminato's founding luminaries, our supernova donors and our patron circle members, individuals who really help us bring the festival to life every year. So uh, please join me in a thank you to the individuals, foundations, corporations, and public sector partners that have helped support the festival. Uh, it's now therefore my pleasure to introduce Marie-José Lamont, the Chief Marketing and Corporate Communications Officer at L'Oreal. Invite her to say a few words prior to our full season announcement. Thank you, Janice. It's 
It's always a pleasure. Actually, it's always very exciting to be here, and it's very nice to be here for six year in a row, so thank you again. Um, we're often asked, why does L'Oreal partner with Luminato? And because, first of all, the word says it, this is not a sponsorship for us, this is a partnership. And it's a partnership that we value very much because it's a way for our brands to align with Luminato with similar values. This festival for us, it's a celebration of art in its various form, but it's art as a mean of self-expression, as a style of being, as a desire to innovate and explore new ways of thinking. And that's what our brands are looking for when they're partnering with Luminato. So Luminato, this year we have 12 brands that will be partnering with this festival in very different forms, whatever they, f each brand feels relevant to them. So for instance, there will be the L'Oreal Paris Ultimate Red Carpet Initiative, the Red Can Exclusive Artist Lounge, the Lancôme Arts Experience, the Yves Saint Laurent Unique Fashionable Opening Evening Night, just to name a few. Our brands are transforming, we believe, the festival goers' engagement towards Lumi Luminato on all of its social platforms. And Luminato, in return, provides our brands with very unique, very targeted, very relevant branded content and that we can share with all of our consumers. So that's a real partnership. And that's where we see that there's a real teamwork. We are looking forward to this Luminato 6 and uh, hope that you will enjoy the pro but promises, I believe, and I think you'll hear it in a minute, a very enhanced festival experience this year. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Marie-José. Um, it is very important for us to have partners that do understand the importance of, of creativity and artistic expression, uh, not just in our community, but L'Oreal has also been an impactful partner um, all across Canada with many others. Well, last fall, Luminato announced the appointment of Jorn Widesprot as artistic director. We knew that he would bring his global experience and his perspective, his artistic perspective to the job. But over the past two months, we've also seen that he brings tremendous energy, new ideas, and ebullience to our team and to the office in only eight weeks. One of the ideas that Jorn shared early on with the team that, that has really infused our planning and inspired all of us is that festivals are a kind of fifth season in the calendar year. We have summer, fall, winter, and spring, but festival season exists as something different something that residents and visitors anticipate each year. Festival season marks new possibilities and experiences as cities come alive, a time to celebrate and to come together as a community. So this June, for 10 incredible days, Luminato is proud to announce that Extraordinary is in season. So to take you through the festival announcement and share all the details of Luminato 6, it is my great pleasure to introduce Luminato Artistic Director, Jorn Weisbrod. Thank you so much, Janice. I was going to comment on the weather too while I was um, raising the microphone, but um, I was told by Alexander if uh, it means my arrival here is going to get rid of all the snow in the winter. Um, I would be a very popular person in Toronto. So uh, I think I've done a pretty good job so far, and uh, hopefully it's going to continue. Um, good morning and welcome, and thank you so much, everyone, for coming to our season announcement of Luminato 6. Um, as Janice said, the festival has grown up, and we decided um, that we can be open about our age and uh, not... Um, uh, and not hide it, so we have incorporated the six into our official logo. Um, I'll be taking you through all of the 2012 programming, but first wanted to preface my remarks with a story that begins about seven months ago in late August, early September, when I learned that I'd been granted an interview with Janice Price and uh, members of the uh, selection committee. I see Lucille here, who was uh, in, in interviewing me as well for the uh, position of the artistic director. And the interview was scheduled for Monday morning, and I was booked on a Sunday afternoon flight from New York to Toronto, but um, it would happen uh, that this weekend was actually um, Hurricane Irene winding up her way uh, on the eastern coast of the US, and I switched my flight to Saturday, 
um, but was still worried that I might not be able to make it because the airports were supposed to be closed. So I suggested to my fiance, Rufus, that um, I jump in the car and actually drive to, to Toronto from uh, Long Island, which is um, a pretty long drive, actually. Um, and he decided to come along um, so we could make a road trip out of it and went to Niagara Falls for the first time. So I thought, well, if the interview is a nice talk, but I wouldn't get the job, at least I've seen the Niagara Falls. Um, and as we headed north, the storm always seemed to be right at our heels. And whenever I turned around, the clouds were pitch black behind us. But in front of us was all the way to Toronto, a clear blue sky. Um, obviously, I took this as an omen. And um, I guess I was right because um, I'm standing here in front of you today. Um, the uh, picture above um, was sort of another uh, impression of Toronto that I took with me actually earlier. Um, uh, we came to the opening of last year's festival and uh, as we were leaving um, the city airport, um, I took this picture of, oh yeah, there it is, of, uh, of the tall ship and I think it's a Lamborghini. Any car lovers, please excuse me if, if this is not a Lamborghini. Um, but I thought it was sort of a, a nice metaphor for the endless possibilities in Toronto sort of uniting one of the slowest and I guess most ecologically correct uh, forms of transportation with uh, one of the fastest and maybe ecologically not so correct um, forms of transportation. And just as I adore uh, Luminato, what it has achieved and what it stands for, and what it has to, uh, the potential to achieve in the future, I've also really fallen in love with your city, which is my city now as well, and my home over the past eight weeks, as um, Janet says. Torontonians and Canadians are extremely welcoming people, I have to say, and um, you can really ask my assistant because she will attest that my schedule was pretty full with uh, welcoming people. I'm often asked also what attracted me to Luminato. First and foremost is that Luminato is not a theater festival, or even a performing arts festival, but quite uniquely a festival of creativity that celebrates every field where people are creative, where, for instance, magic and food are as integral to the mix um, as music, theater, and dance. I also like that Luminato is a young festival, not yet six years old. We're getting there, born in the digital age and with the attitude that culture is not elitist. And what a lot of people maybe even in Toronto don't realize, in North America it's really hard to find something that is of equal stature and even in the world it is al already regarded as one of the top um, um, festivals that people are very, very keen to uh, collaborate with. I'm also often asked about my vision for Illuminato and I hope it'll be developing also more and more over the future, but I am keenly interested in collaborations and in bringing artists from different fields together. Just like an orchestra, when you rehearse the different parts, you put them in different rooms, you have to bring them all together. You have to bring all the instruments together to produce a sound that is greater and more beautiful than the sum of the individual um, instruments. I'm also interested in connecting Canadian artists with international artists because um, Luminato should be a place for production where artists from Canada and around the world can come and create new work. A festival is the place that can be a home and a meeting place for artists, but also a home and a meeting place for an audience and a mixture of both, hopefully. Luminato has no walls. We do not have an institution. Therefore, we can create something new. We can invent new forms. But a festival still needs to be rooted in its home city, Toronto. Um, which is a well, which is, as we all know, um, and I'm getting to know it more and more, um, an incredibly multicultural, multifaceted city. To me, the trunk of these festival roots that are embedded in the local culture represents Canada, and the strength and support um, of this trunk carries the branches out into the world and hopefully will make this tree that is the Luminato Festival stick out beyond the canopy of the cultural global landscape and will be seen and admired from, um, from afar. I was going to say something about the fifth season too, but um, um, Janice uh, was so kind to uh, introduce that so thought already. And I'm really proud that some of the ambitions of mine have already been, are already slightly visible um, in, in the program um, of this year. But before I get into specifics, I'd like to add that 
Prior to my arrival of the 2012 programming, um, it had already been conceived and confirmed to a great extent, and it's important to acknowledge the tremendous contributions of my predecessor, Chris Lorway. And uh, please join me in a round of applause for Chris, who's done really a tremendous job over the last five years. And uh, I'm sure that we are going to uh, continue working uh, together uh, over the next years. Um, the overarching themes uh, for this year's festival are a revolution and transformation, which play out across all disciplines and every, every facet of the program. A lot of the programming deals with historic shifts as we look back at the 1812 war, or artistic shifts as we look at artists who've revolutionized their art forms, created new languages, and created new art forms almost, such as Philip Glass, Robert Wilson, Robert Robert Lepage, um, and um, Ohad Naharin, and many, many others. Now on to the 2012 programming, starting with a couple of major components that have already been announced, um, and some you will find later because you've read something in the Toronto Star already this morning, um, including a project that is really very, very dear to my heart, um, the North American premiere of Robert Wilson and Philip Glass's landmark contemporary opera, Einstein on the Beach. And to me, um, every seat that is going to be empty in this Sony theater will be a personal failure. So I urge you to tell all your friends that you have to come and see this because Einstein really is to opera, theater, performance, dance, what the Mona Lisa is to painting. You have to see it once in your lifetime. And you have this incredible chance here in Toronto. It's the first time that Robert Wilson is, shown a is showing a work of his in Toronto, it's the first time that this piece is actually shown outside of New York City in North America. It's a major event, and uh, I urge you all to come and see it. The 2012 production of Einstein was commissioned by BAM, the Barbican in London, the Olympic Festival, um, Cal performances of the University of California in Berkeley, Luminato, of course, um, the Netherlands Opera, uh, the Opera et Orchestre National de Montpellier, and the Universal, University Musical Society of the University of Michigan. It's also going to go to Hong Kong and Mexico City, but you don't have to travel that far. You can see it right here from on the 8th, 9th, and 10th. And I'm very excited that we also have introduced a $25 ticket. So it's a five hour long opera. So you get $5 per opera of incredible art and entertainment. Um, Prior to each performance, I'll be in the, uh, the lobby of the Sony Center here, and I'll uh, give introductory remarks um, about Einstein on the beach. For the June 10th performance, we've arranged with several leading physicists from the Waterloo Perimeter Institute to attend Einstein on the beach and give us their view on Einstein and, um, and, and the opera. And as part of our illuminations program, again, I will be hosting a pre-festival panel discussion with Robert Wilson, Philip Glass, and Lucinda Childs on June 6th at the AGO. And I'm particularly happy about these two collaborations with two really wonderful uh, Ontario uh, institutions as we were able to uh, tie them um, together in the, just in the past few weeks. And since Robert Wilson and Philip Glass uh, cannot be here because the premiere is actually going to be on Friday, um, we have, they have sent a little video message um, that we're going to look at now. Hello, Luminato Festival. This is Bob Wilson, and I'm very excited about coming to Toronto. This is the first time a, a work of mine has been seen there. Uh, sorry I can't be with you. This is the day before uh, the opening of Einstein on the Beach here in Montpellier in the south of France. Uh, this collaboration with Philip Glass is, I think, one of the most important of my career and I'm very curious to see how it's going to be received by a new generation of, of young people. I'm very uh, happy that we can do it here in, in Canada, which I have a lot of personal connections to Canada. I guess it's very well known that I've spent almost every summer of my life up here in uh, Cape Breton uh, since uh, nine, oh. Oh, come to think of it, a lot of Einstein was written in Canada. I wrote it in a, in, a, in a farmhouse in Cape Breton in 1975 in the summertime. So come to think of it, this is 
the first time it will be in Canada, and it was a lot of it was written there. I remember playing this music for my friends at that time, and we didn't even know where it was going to go. It was just an idea. Bob and I had begun working on it the year before, and it didn't really have a home yet. So it was kind of coming back to Canada. Where part of it, a very significant part of it, was written there. So uh, for all these reasons, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to be in Canada again, once again. Thank you. Thank you, Luminata, for having me. Hello, Luminata. Equally exciting, I think, is the world premiere of Robert Lepard's Playing Cards 1, Spades, the first part of a projected four-part series using the structure of a deck of cards as its framework. Um, I've just returned from Quebec City, where I, among uh, Janice Price, Marianne Farrell, and Naomi Campbell um, from the festival, were allowed to see a preview of playing cards. And even though we're not allowed to say anything, <laughs> as the work is still going to evolve until its premiere in, in Madrid, one thing I can say, it is truly Lepage at its best. It is it plays in the round. He uses sort of all his wizardry of, 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 of scenic changes and it is truly a tornado of a production. There is actually a tornado on stage, um, so I um, encourage you to find out what that actually is. Spades will be presented at the Joey and Toby Tannenbaum Opera Center uh, from June 13th to the 17th. It's an ex machina production initiated by the 360-degree network and commissioned by Luminato in co-production with the Teatro Circo Price in Madrid, the Ruhr Finale, the Seine Nationale de Sénard, uh, La Comète, um, Cirque Jules Verne et Maison de la Culture, the Roundhouse London, the Oestregaswerk Theater in Copenhagen, uh, the Norfolk and Norwich Theater, uh, Festival, um, Gasverkehr, Stockholm, uh, who are all members of the 360-degree network, which means they have um, the ability to show productions in the round. And Lepage will participate in a discussion of his work and the development of playing cards cycle on June 14th at the Canadian Stages Berkeley Street Theatre. Unfortunately, we do not have a video of Robert because he was so incredibly busy rehearsing. But one thing I brought back uh, from me from Quebec City was walking on the... Um, Plains of Abraham, I found this plaque, and it said that during 1776 and the 1783 uh, American Revolution, German troops, again, played a key role in the defense of Canada alongside the British. So I have a bit of the impression that they were already fighting for me a little bit. Um, the next uh, project, which is also coming from Quebec City, uh, not from Quebec City, from Quebec, is uh, La Belle et la Bête, a contemporary retelling created by Michel Lemieux and Victor Pilon of Montreal's, Montreal, cutting edge Lemieux Pilon 4D art um, presented at the Bluma Appel Theater from June 8th through June 12th. This remarkable multidisciplinary work that uses virtual reality allowing actors to interact with projected scenery and other forms of themselves in a 3D environment. It is not 3D, you don't have to wear glasses, but it is still 3D. Um, the piece had its debut last year in Quebec and played to sold out houses throughout its entire run. And Luminato is proud to present the debut of the English language version. Here are a few words and a few images and glimpses at uh, La Belle et la Bête from Michel and Victor. Hi, I'm Michel. Hi, I'm Victor. We're very excited to come to the Luminata Festival to present to you our new creation, La Belle et la Bête, in the English version. Our creation is not based on the children's fairy tale we all know of, Beauty and the Beast. It's actually based on the original version written 15 years before by Madame de Villeneuve, and we adapted it in a contemporary way, with contemporary characters. So we hope you will be with us to witness and to share this excitement that we have to present this show to you. Thank you very much.
dance and theater category Saturday 21, which marks the long-awaited return to Toronto of Tel Aviv's acclaimed Batsheva Dance Company, which was founded by Martha Graham and one of her disciples, Baroness Batsheva, in uh, the 50s. This new work from Batsheva's artistic director, Ohad Naharin, is a remarkable examination of the visceral power of movement rooted in the language of Gaga, not Lady Gaga, a revolutionary form of dynamic expression developed by Naharin. It's the North American premiere, and it was commissioned by Luminato with the Tel Aviv Festival. Luminato is pleased also to partner with the Koffler Center of the Arts on a gala opening night performance of Saturday 21. And we also want to thank the Consulate General of Israel in Toronto for their support. And here's a message from Ohad, followed by a brief look at some excerpts of the piece. I am actually, I'm actually a lot closer than usual physically closer to you than usual. I'm in my hotel room in Quebec. We are very grateful to the people of Luminato for being our partners in producing Sade 21 and for bringing us to Toronto. In connection to Sade 21 and to this point of my life, I wish to say how much delicacy is becoming the heart of our process the choice and the acquired skill to be delicate. We look for it in everything we do, in the way we mix content and form, and we find it inside our most exaggerated and explosive moments too. See you in June. Ohad will also be in conversation with American novelist Nicole Krauss as part of our Illumination series. I really wanted to encourage artists to speak with artists, um, as my hope is that the conversations are not only exciting for the audience, but actually also exciting for the artists themselves, as it is less an interview situation, but really an exchange of ideas. And who knows, maybe some of these conversations that we initiate among artists also spark new projects in the, in the future. Moving on to our ticketed music program, we begin with what is quite literally a marathon undertaking. At Kerner Hall on Saturday, June 9th, a pianist Stuart Goodyear will undertake something that um, is basically like climbing all the 8,000 meter high mountains in the world. Um, he will achieve we all hope, the honest, astonishing feat of performing all 32 Beethoven sonatas in a single day. That is 11 hours of music. It's a world premiere, um, and it's produced in association with the Royal Conservatory of Music. Um, Stuart is actually also here, but we um, do have a message recorded from him uh, already, um, so uh, we will not bother him to talk himself, but we will look at what he said a few weeks ago. Thank you so much. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is concert pianist Stuart Goodyear. I'm here to tell you a little bit about the marathon that I'm going to be performing June 9, 2012 at the Luminato Festival. Beethoven has been a part of my life since um, since I can remember, since I was maybe around three years old or so. And these Beethoven sonatas that I will be performing, those were the pieces that compelled me to be a concert pianist. And every time I play one sonata, I just can't stop at one. It's this maddening obsession that I have. If I play a recital of Beethoven, uh, right there and then I just want to play all 32. And that is the backbone of this one-day marathon that I'm going to be presenting at the Luminato Festival. It is a delight and a privilege. When I, when I first heard about this undertaking, I was 
stunned and immediately thought of this piece almost more in the context of a performance piece that could almost also be placed in a gallery along with some of the great long durational performance uh, pieces of our times. And so I had the idea to emphasize and augment Stewart's marathon um, that he will be joined on stage by an actual performance artist, Milati Suyudarmo, who's a student of uh, Marina Abramovich, who had a breathtaking um, retrospective at MoMA a couple of years ago. And Milati will, be, will create a series of three almost motionless performance pieces that come from a very intense study of Beethoven. And she has actually read many more books than Stuart has, which we found out. He did practice a little bit more than she did, um, so they're sort of equal on that. And, um, and has also had a very intense dialogue with, with Stuart to develop these, um, these um, ideas. I often find that we can, what we can, that what we see can actually help us to hear better. So this idea um, was really behind asking Milati to perform uh, alongside um, um, Stuart, that the audience might, through her producing the image, be able to open the ears better and focus on, on what is happening. Also, celebrated German visual artist Jurinde Vogt is going to create a series of 32 monumental drawings, one for each sonata, to complement Stuart's performance and further explore the emotive power of Beethoven's music. This is a series of drawings that we have commissioned. And to sort of round off our exploration of, of, of Beethoven and how we try in the future really more to look at um, themes from, a very, from various different angles, uh, we've invited best-selling author and neuroscientist Antonio Damasio, the author of Descartes' Error and uh, Self Comes to Mind, um, and according to the New York Times, the Mick Jagger of neuroscience, um, who will give a talk um, on um, music and the influence um, that it has on the brain prior to the last um, of Stewart's three um, shows at Kerner Hall. The Toronto Symphony Orchestra returns to the festival this year with another late night performance at Roy Thompson Hall on June 9th. This year, music director Peter Ungen and the TSO will present Shostakovich's electrifying 11th symphony. And here's Peter. One of the great things about working with the Luminato Festival is it allows us to do things that we wouldn't perhaps otherwise ordinarily do. Uh, a couple of years ago, we started the late night program, starting concerts at 10.30 at night. First, we did Beethoven 9. Last year, we did Mahler 5. And this year, we're doing the 11th Symphony of Shostakovich, one of the greatest masterpieces of the 20th century. It's actually about Bloody Sunday, the uh, January 9th, 1905. It tells the story of that tragic day when all of those people of all generations uh, went to plead with the Tsar to give them food, to, to give them some sense of hope in their future. And of course, the troops of the Tsar opened fire on them and massacred uh, a thousand people. Uh, this symphony tells that story. It, uh, it's, it's a, a memorial for those people who were lost, uh, but it also has a final movement of such powerful defiance that uh, the excitement is absolutely palpable. So it's going to be a very exciting thing to start a concert at 10.30 at night with this completely new type of audience that loves to come to concerts late. Well, don't think it starts at 11 because it's the 11th symphony, but it starts at 10.30. Um, Following sold-out all-star tributes in London and New York, Luminato is also proud to present, and if you have read uh, the Toronto Star, you have heard about this already, um, a concert called Love Over and Over, the Songs of Kate McGarrigle, one of Canada's and really the world's greatest musical treasures who passed away from uh, sarcoma two years ago. Among the more than 20 artists who will be part of the June 15th celebration at Massey Hall will be Kate's sister and musical partner, Anna McGarrigle, who's here with us tonight. And um, thank you so much for coming, Anna. She, um, she also drove, actually, yesterday from Montreal, and she always had the similar experience that I did because the weather in Montreal was miserable and the weather here in Toronto was beautiful. Um, Plus Kate's children, uh, uh, Rufus and Martha Wainwright, her niece, Lily Lankin, who's also here, um, um, who helped her mother driving. Thanks so much for coming. Um, Emmylou Harris, Bruce Coburn, Jane Sibbery, 
Emilu, uh, members of Broken Social Scene and Stars, so a little bit of a younger uh, blood and energy, and the great Mary Margaret O'Hara. A portion of the proceeds from the concert will be donated to the Kate McGarrigal Fund to further sarcoma research. Here from LA with some additional comments of Rufus and Martha, um, and some footage um, of the New York Tribute. I actually shot um, the first video, not the New York Tribute, but I did not design the costumes, just to let you know. Hello. Toronto. Uh, this is Rufus and Martha from, from the beautiful Chateau Marmont Hotel in Los Angeles. And uh, I'm about to take a bath, that's why I have my bath going on. Um, but we're so excited to be coming to Toronto in June and to bring, well for me I'm very excited to bring my, uh, the Canadian premiere of my new album, Out of the Game, uh, to the lovely city of Toronto. And, uh, and, and then also, about? yeah, the Kate Tribute Show, which is going to be huge at Luminata Festival, so we're really glad that Luminata Festival is doing this concert at Massey Hall on the 15th. In honor of our mother. In honor of our mother. You'll call my name and I One of these days and it won't be long You'll call my name We are actually also going to show Leanne Lunson's film, which is a 90-minute uh, concert uh, film as part of the um, as part of the film program. The uh, the concert in New York had a different name, so each time they go into a different city, they assemble a different group of artists, and and there will uh, be a different uh, name to it. Um, I, I'm sort of oh here. A key theme of this year's festival is the bicentennial of the War of 1812, the only armed conflict between Canada and the United States, and the first time, actually, the U.S. Congress declared a war, many uh, were to follow, and also the first time that Washington uh, was set on fire, later only in a German director directed blockbuster movies. Um, our exploration of themes <laughs> that put to an end or maybe not, uh, U.S. takeover fantasies of Canada touches various portions of the festival, beginning with an amazing installation at Fort York called The Encampment. From the festival's opening day through June 24th, this luminous large-scale art installation by Tom Sokolowski and Jenny Ann McGowan, who are both here, of Thomas and Guinevere, will comprise 200 A-frame tents, each a collaboration with an artist who has created a visual representation of one aspect of the war's civilian history based on a real-life story of family, love, loss, and survival. The call for proposals to artists of all ages and disciplines for the installations within the 200 tents is still out, so if you have an idea. And I'm excited that with this project, there's yet another project in the festival where the individual creates something that will add up to a whole orchestra of expression. The encampment was commissioned by the City of Toronto and Luminato, Toronto Festival of Arts and Creativity, for the bicentennial commemoration of the War of 1812. And we have a brief video statement here as well, and I'm sure that um, Tom and the others are going to be happy to an answer any questions afterwards. <laughs> really closely and uh, have the opportunity. We have spaces where we can work together and then go off and work on our own. But it's all sort of in, in a bigger vision that's similar. We can work together with everybody's diverse experience in the arts under Tom's direction. There's just something about this one. I think just because, you know, we've all been there. She's, uh, she's 
finally able to play Scrabble and using his delight in putting all the letters together to make a word because she's not allowed to read. These were actually some images from a previous installation in New York, which was um, a lot smaller in size, though, than um, it will be here in Toronto. The 1812 theme is also central to Laura's Cow, a new opera um, celebrating the heroism of Laura Secord, performed by the 200-member Canadian Children's Opera Company at the Harbourfront's N-Wave Theatre from June 6th to 10th, and I urge you to buy tickets for that soon because, you know, 200 children have 400 parents. They have 800 grandparents. Um, so it's going to be sold out fast. And at Kernel Hall on June 8th, author and historian Michael Bliss will moderate a lively debate about U.S. encroachment into Canada with U of T professor emeritus Stephen Clarkson, arguing that the American invasion continues to this day in everything from political ideas and cultural values to movies and television. J.L. Granitstein, professor of Canadian history at York University, will present the counter-argument. Our arts partner with this um, talk is the Royal Ontario Museum. Also for this year's closing concert, Peter Ungen and the TSO will return for a free concert at David Pico Square, the first time a free concert by the TSO in over a decade, featuring Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture. He did not particularly write it for the American-Canadian War, but it's the same year. And a new 1812-themed overture, which is since yesterday called the Overture for 2012 by Philip Glass. So he did write this for um, the Canadian-American um, uh, relationship and celebrated works by Canadian and American composers, including Aaron Copland, Howard Shore, John Williams, and Mal Malcolm Forsyth. The new overture is co-commissioned by the City of Toronto, Luminato, Maryland State Arts Council, it's actually going to be performed at exactly the same time um, by the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra, which is, uh, Baltimore is Philip's hometown, the uh, TSO, Toronto Symphony Orchestra, um, music director Peter Ungen, and the Baltimore Symphony o Orchestra um, under the music directorship of Marin Alsop. We thank Chaitin and Clara Madur, uh, sorry, Mather for their generous support of this free concert, and here again is Peter. Something I'm also looking forward to tremendously is a day in June when we're going to give a performance outside, very rare situation for the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. David Pico Square, right next to uh, Roy Thompson Hall, it's actually our backyard, will be the backdrop for a performance of Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture, but also a brand new overture written by Philip Glass called the 2012 Overture. Uh, this is a huge piece, very celebratory in nature, uh, big and loud and dramatic. Uh, and it's going to be a, a very exciting afternoon, again, thanks to the fact that we're working with Luminato. Well, thanks that we're working with you. <laughs> Moving on to our literary program, we will again be presenting a wide spectrum of outstanding international novelists and authors that interweave with themes of the festival, including Pulitzer Prize winning novelist Richard Ford, who will present his new novel, A Cross-Border Adventure, entitled Canada. Irvin Welsh, debu debuting Skag Boys, the hot hotly anticipated prequel to his global bestseller, Trainspotting. Booker Prize winner Peter Carey, discussing his new novel, A Chemistry of Tears. Novelist Chris Cleave, whose new novel, Gold, unfolds at the 2012 London Olympics in discussions with Dr. Vincent Lam, who's affecting a new novel, The Headmaster's Wage, is set amid the turmoil of the Vietnam War. Louis Lapham, editor emeritus of Harper's Magazine and publisher and editor of Lapham's Quarterly, sharing his views on the state and future of Canada-US relations. Nicole Krauss, best-selling author of The History of Love and Great House, debuting a new short story call called A Garden is an Arrangement of Light. 
Additionally, for our second year, we are partnering with the Hay Festival to present some of Latin America's foremost authors, including Colombian novelist Laura Restrepo and Peru's Santiago Rocangillo. I hope I pronounced that right. And continuing our 1812 programming, Luminato at the Library, in partnership with the Toronto Public Library, will present an evaluation of the war from two distinct perspectives, as examined by Pulitzer Prize winning historian Alan Taylor and noted historian and political scientist James Laxer. The cross-border discussion continues with West Coast American author Jim Lynch and British novelist Harry Kunzru, and a trio of celebrated novelists, Giller Prize winner Lyndon McIntyre, Keo MacLear, and Ayad Akhtar, will discuss differences and similarities between Canadian and American cultural and literary voices. Here's Ayad Akhtar, whose de debut novel, American Dervish, has emerged as one of this year's major critical hits. Hi, my name is Ayad Akhtar, and I am the author of American Dervish. My intention behind writing the book was to open a window on what it was like to grow up Muslim in America, and at a time when the seeds of so much of what's happening in the world today were being planted. All of my work deals with Islam and the West. I write movies and plays, stories about characters who are struggling to assimilate, striving to understand what it means to be Muslim and Western at the same time. I want to thank you all for all the hard work and the enthusiasm, and I am really looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Finally, I'm extremely excited to announce that again this year we will be partnering with The New Yorker for three singularly remarkable events. We are actually the only venue outside of New York City where The New Yorker creates original programming similar to their New Yorker festival in their hometown. In an extremely rare appearance, one of Canada's and the world's most beloved authors, a modern master of the short story, Alice Munro, will discuss her illustrious career with The New Yorker's fiction editor, Deborah Tysman. Additionally, The New Yorker theater critic, Hilton Alls, will lead a panel on the future of the avant-garde, referencing um, and taking Einstein on the beach as a hook. Joining Hilton Alds on the panel will be Obie Award-winning playwright Yong Jin Lee, whose piece The Shipment uh, has just been seen at Harborfront. Uh, Mark Russell, Associate Artistic Director of the New York's Public Library, uh, New York's Public Theater, not library. Um, they should do some plays there. Multiple award-winning playwright David Ajimi and Richard Maxwell, Artistic Director of the New York City Players. And for our third New Yorker event, we've just confirmed that acclaimed staff writer Adam Gopnik will be returning to Luminato this year in conversation with revered journalist, poet, novelist, humorist, and food writer Calvin Trillin, a New Yorker contributor since, 19, since the 60s. Gopnik, who published The Table Comes First, Family, France, and the Meaning of Food, and Trillin will be discussing Canadian cuisine, linking the New Yorker program also to our food program. And please let me introduce to you the person who's been working extremely hard on assembling such a stellar roster of international um, talent, our literary programmer, Deviani Saltzman. There she is. <clears throat> it is tempting to say that everything that Luminato is doing is magic, but, um, and it is, but magic itself is also a vital component of our 2012 lineup. I've always been personally very, very fascinated by that art form, and I think that magic is wrongfully so, the bastard in the canon of the arts. Magicians are virtuosos who carry the key to a world of possibilities beyond our real world, the same world, I believe, that all artists enter but everyone is sort of taking a different door. Um, this year, we have three incredible performers, and here from Magicana is David Ben, who can explain um, the uniqueness of these artists in a much better way than I could. My name is David Ben, and I am the artistic director of Magicana and the program director of the Masters of Magic series at Luminato. This year, we've invited three very special performers who will challenge the way we perceive the world and function within it. First up, Banachek and the Alpha Project. Now, Banachek is a mentalist 
who examines the invisible connections between us and the beauty and danger of make-believe. Second up is Richard Turner. Now, Richard is a cheat, a card cheat, but a noble one, who is also blind. But he performs some of the most exquisite sleight of hands you will ever witness. And finally, from Chile, Juan Esteban Varela who has created a magic show for the blind and those who are blindfolded for the performance, demonstrating that as long as someone has the ability to imagine, it is possible to stimulate their fantasy with fiction. We look forward to seeing you at Luminata. My name. And I want to thank the Slate Family Foundation for, the, for their support of Magic at Luminato. On the visual arts front, we've again assembled a world-class assortment of artists, including Toronto's Dan Bergeron, known for his guerrilla-style street interventions, who will be creating a street-long installation in Regent Park called Reply. It's commissioned by Luminato, and Dan has also been commissioned by the City of Toronto to create a permanent installation in Regent Park. The acclaimed Canadian art collective, Blue Republic, who will be mounting a monumental two-part installation presented at Pearson Airport and in the downtown core. It's a world premiere and commissioned by Luminato and the Greater Toronto Airport Authority. Montreal-born, New York-based artist Corno, who will be at the center of a day-long loft-style party that mixes live painting, performance art, and music. The exhibition is titled Soon Is Now um, and is presented by Lancôme with our friends from L'Oréal. The richly imaginative Brussels-based collective Labo have created this technology, technologically amazing installation entitled SN. Um, not SM, which stands for Signal to Noise, which transforms jumbled letters into words and possibly even poetry. They use these old signboards that make this beautiful noise, just like photo cameras, um, at airports and train stations as sort of the artistic material. It's the North American pre premiere of this work, and it's presented with the support of the uh, Commission des Arts Numériques de la Communauté Française de Belgique et Arcadie. An Austrian artist, Rainer Prohaska, whose art will literally fill the city street as he disperses mobile kitchens across town, assembling them into larger sculptures and then preparing actual meals um, that the public can not only eat and share, but can also participate in creating. The recipes actually will dictate the shape of the sculptures that will pop up throughout the festival at different festival venues across town. Reiner also happens to be probably the only artist with the largest edition number in the world of 80 million. Um, he's created an edition of, of, of 80 million. He actually created the um, official Austrian postage stamps. Um, luckily, he didn't have to sign them all. I'm uh, very excited. Um, that he, with his project, he's creating really also a link between our food and our visual arts program. And here's Reiner to give a little bit more information. Okay, hi, uh, my name is Rainer Prohaska. I'm working on the uh, food project for Illuminato 2012, and I'm going to introduce you uh, this prototype for uh, this uh, kind of work. And uh, this is called a uh, Caribia, and it will be part of, of the full installation for uh, this year's Illuminati Festival. Okay, hi, uh, my name is Werner Prohaska. There'll be many of those. They're like um, um, multiplying itself. Um, our visual arts program will also include audio descriptions for accessibility supported by TELUS, one of our main sponsors. It has been a huge pleasure to work with our um, programmer for the visual arts and manager of exhibitions, Robert Vandenberg, on the visual arts program that really tries to span a huge variety of artistic practices of today and connect and enlighten different aspects of the programming. Thanks, Robert. And speaking of food, we are again delighted to be partnering with President's Choice for the President's Choice A Thousand Tastes of Toronto. This year, the food pro program will be presented during the festival's opening weekend on June 9th and 10th, and will feature some of the city's best chefs showcasing the cultural diversity of our local foods 
scene with a focus on Canadian food as sustainability are issues that affect everyone. We're returning to the distillery district where Luminato launched its food program a while ago and here it will also be where the public will help Reiner to assemble his carts um, and create the first sculpture. We are also thrilled to be renewing our partnership with TIFF with a wide-ranging slate of films presented at the TIFF Lightbox chosen to enhance festival programming and broaden our appreciation of artists like Robert Wilson, Philip Glass, Ohad, Robert Lepage, but also show how other artists have had an impact on this medium. The program combines films such as Lepage, Le Confessionnal, Out of Focus, a dance documentary on the Pacheva artistic director, Absolute Wilson and Howard Bruckner's terrific and newly restored documentary in Robert Wilson and the Civil Wars, probably the most gigantic theater project in, in, in world history. Jack Smith's Flaming Creature, and Jack was a big influence on Wilson's work and actually a frequent user of his bathroom in the 60s because his loft in Soho did not have one. Um, Cocteau's La Belle et la Bête, the terrific documentary Glass, a portrait in 12 parts, and others. Final list is still being worked on and will be posted on Luminato.com very, very soon. The Luminato film series Luminato and Tiff go to the movies is presented by Visa Infinite. Last year, in honor of Luminato, visionary and co-founder David Pico, Metro Square was officially renamed to David Pico Square, as you all know, and the space emerged as Luminato's central hub and the heart of the entire festival. This year, to fully celebrate David Pico Square as the Luminato's hub, it will be completely transformed by architectural luminaries Jack Diamond and Donald Schmidt of the celebrated Toronto firm of Diamond Schmidt. The remarkable reimagining of the hub called Windscape will make the square an essential um, part of the festival's artistic vision as all of this year's shows and presentations and illustration and presentations of the music program and a lot of other program will happen right there. Here to discuss his and Donald Schmidt's singular vision for Windscape is Jack Diamond, and I also, I also want to acknowledge his team, Michael Leckman, Brad Hinson, Martin Staba, who are in the audience today, and Mitchell Chen. Jack, Jack, please come up, and it's truly a great honor to share this podium with the architect who I think has really created one of the most beautiful sounding concert halls in Montreal, and I'm really excited to hear more of you in both senses. You know that architects normally uh, try to build buildings that last a long time and don't shake. <laughs> well, the first transformation, and this is the theme of this festival, the first transformation that we have had is that this building or this structure will last 10 days and it'll shake and shimmer and billow. So it's quite the opposite of everything we've ever done. Um, however, what it does is really, we think, represent everything that is about Illuminata. First of all, it will represent all the arts. Architecture, it's space making, choreography. In fact, there's going to be digital choreography that will use the wind and sound and shape to create something that moves and attracts. There's urban design, the whole transformation of public space is really critical to the continuing renewal and interest of the, of the city. And of course, installation art and all of its visual. So you have sight, sound, movement. So this is a very real and symbolic representation of Luminata and all of its wonderful aspects. And it will be transformational. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want your remarks? back or we'll put them into our archives and frame them. That's really wonderful. Um, I must add that the transformation of the hub will actually become an in annual endeavor, just like the Serpentines Gallery um, Pavilion Program or MoMA Pierce's One Summer Courtyard Architecture, with new architects selected from the world's most illustrious firms undertaking this enormous challenge to change the way we experience the city and give ideas for the future of our city. Windscape, to me, 
seems to be almost the embodiment of this idea of the fifth season as the ribbon sort of flies into the space, wraps everyone in, and then, as Jack says, after 10 years, uh, 10 days, 10 years would be nice, Luminato Festival for 10 years, um, um, leaving hopefully only, a, uh, leaving a memory behind um, of, of blissful moments that we all share together. Windscape will be home to a spectrum of free programming, including musicians from across Canada and around the globe. You will also have, um, you saw those orange wind socks that sort of shape a circle, and this is actually going to be our version of the Bellagio Fountain creating a wind sock ballet on every half an hour, so you can actually um, set your clock according to um, the Diamond and Schmidt installation. It'll be choreographed each day by a different emerging uh, Canadian choreographer. <coughs> New at the Hub and every weekday at noon will be a series of lunchtime illuminations at the Luminato Lounge presented by Mill Street Brewery and featuring festival artists and conversations about their work, each concluding with a complimentary music performance. The conversations include Ohat Naharin, Stuart Goodyear, Nicole Krauss, Joe Boyd, legendary producer who plugged in Dylan at the Newport Folk Festival and the producer of the uh, Kate McGarrigal tribute, Anna McGarrigal, in conversation with Michael Ondaatje and many others. There will not be a better way to spend your lunch during that week, so cancel all your business lunches during the festival. Um, the complete list of lunchtime illuminations is going to be available on our uh, webpage and it's also included in the pre press material. As for the Hub's roster of music stars, free afternoon and evening concerts will be presented throughout both opening and closing weekend, and themed evening concert concerts will fill the Windscape stage every weeknight. From rap and hip-hop to world music, singer-songwriters and symphonies, the Hub's music program will showcase artists from Canada, the US, Ghana, Somalia, um, Jamaica, Trinidad, Mali, Cuba, Mexico, Italy, Germany, and Ethiopia. We try to put together a program that is as diverse as Toronto citizens and its rich multicultural mosaic that will excite the urban hipsters as well as their younger brothers and sisters, their parents and their grandparents, and hopefully, in the end, we'll mix everyone together as we all celebrate the universal power of music. Complete details of the daily lineup um, are in the press material, um, but among the nearly three dozen marquee names that will be taking the stage are Kanon, um, who will uh, open the festival on June 8th. It'll be the first uh, performance of his new album um, in Canada, in Toronto. Um, Rufus Wainwright, who you saw, who also said that this is going to be the Canadian premiere of his new Mark Ronson-produced um, album called Out of the Game. Uh, we hope not yet. Kathleen Edwards, um, Ernest Ranglin, Lorena McKennett, um, one of the first, uh, one of the very, very few shows she's done in Toronto in a very long time, and we think maybe the first open-air concert for her. Uh, Michael Franti, Giovanotti, Dan Manigan, sorry, Dan Mangan, Jamie Stone, Kaysan, Chantel, and the Bukovina Club Orchestra, and Afrocubism, all cu culminating on the festival's closing night with the TSO's first outdoor concert in nearly a decade. We want to thank our festival hub partners, including National Bank, Kia Canada, TELUS, and the various L'Oreal brands, um, L'Oreal Canada brands, who will be pre present during the festival's 10 days, enhancing the festival goer experience. We also want to thank Slate Music for their support of the Rufus Wainwright evening. The man in charge with this exhaustive uh, job of coordinating the global um, cornucopia of new word in my vocabulary, um, of musical talent is our music programmer, Derek Andrews. Thanks so much, Derek. <laughs> and finally, Luminato's education and community outreach program. Integral to the festival's ability to extend and enhance the Luminato experience for students, families, and communities all across Toronto, beyond the festival's 10 days. This year's education program includes the continuation of Luminato's five years of work with the Regent Park, Parkdale, and St. Jamestown communities, including workshops, interactive concerts, and authors and school programs. Additionally, the program includes a million
mini version of the encampment for elementary school students, artist in resident Dan Bergeron's work with students on site-specific sculptures and with the Toronto Public Library, a Gaga movement and workshop with members of the Batsheva Dance Company. The education outreach program is supported by Kia Canada. All of this program is the wonderful work of our director of education and community outreach, Jessica Dargo Kaplan. Thanks so much, Jessica. <laughs> and of course, the festival wouldn't really function without the over 400 volunteers who give their time and help to make the festival a success, success each year. Our volunteer program is supported by Manulife Financial. And there you have it. That was almost it. I want to close with some um, ending remarks um, in a little over um, 30 minutes. That's what my script says. I know it's a little bit longer. To me, the greatness of a culture of a nation really depends on two things. Firstly, does it produce and can it support great artists? And secondly, can it attract great artists and do they make a country to their home and to their place of creation. The second one is almost more important as artists, I believe, are not citizens of a country, but are really true citizens of the world. My dream is that Luminata will be the best home to the best artists, a nest for Torontonian, Canadian, and global artists flying in, breeding new life, where passports are turning into works of art. Before closing, I want to say how grateful I am really to everyone in the Luminato team who's been steering me incredibly over the last eight weeks, uh, who've embraced me so generously, I guess they had really no other choice, and warmly, and who've endured all my stupid questions and inquiries. It has been wonderful getting to know the people of Toronto, many of the arts leaders already, artists, politicians, journalists, um, but also people on the street, my dry cleaner is really someone I can, I can recommend, taxi drivers and many other people. If there are people in the room, and I'm sure there are, who I have not had yet the pleasure to meet, please excuse me. I've really tried everything to um, meet as many people in the first eight weeks um, as possible. And my assistant has been um, quite frustrated sometimes because she really didn't know how to squeeze in another meeting. I'll be here for a while, so um, you'll not, you won't get rid of me so fast, and I cannot wait to get Toronto, to get to know Toronto inside and out and Canada and all its provinces. But before I sign off, I have a very special toast to um, a fellow German. We have um, test tubes already um, filled with, I know it's only orange juice, um, but today is Albert Einstein's 133rd birthday. So happy birthday, Einstein. Thank you again so much for joining us, and um, I want to ask our friends from the Lemon Bucket Orchestra now to play. Oh, no, Janice, I'm sorry, don't play yet. Um, Janice is um, closing very off. Soon, very soon. Thank you so much, Jorn. Thank you. He gets to take a small breath. Um, it's fantastic that you can speak that quickly, not in your native tongue. Um, you've, you've learned that very well. Um, thank you. We, we did want to introduce the entire season to you, and I, I know it's a lengthy presentation, but um, it's all on your media USB keys or hard press kits, if you still prefer uh, to receive it that way. So that's the Luminato 6 season. Thank you again. It does feel good to have that all out there, um, finally, because we're, we've all been dying to talk about it, of course, and not able to do so. Um, I know my uh, senior director of marketing, Marianne Farrell, wants me to remind you all that our tickets do go on sale on April 14th. You can check out luminato.com. Uh, the full website will phase in um, over the next little while, uh, but definitely will be fully up and uh, populated in early April. And for the first time ever, we've also, uh, starting next Wednesday, created um, an early sale program, the Luminato Premiere Series Package, which combines those three extraordinary uh, theater and uh, music pieces you saw into one uh, low price, uh, Robert Lepage, Einstein on the Beach, and um, Le Belle et Le Bet, um, are available now uh, in a three-package set. So please uh, take a look at that. And um, it wouldn't be, as Jorn said, a Luminato announcement without a little live music. Um, we've got some people to play us out. They are the Lemon Bucket Orchestra. They're Toronto's own Balkan, Klezmer, Gypsy, Party, Punk, Super Band. 
You can't go wrong. Just book them. They've got to cover one of your uh, spots there. Um, you will be able to catch them at David Pico Square on Saturday, June 17th, opening for the amazing Chantel. And this does end the formal part of our morning, but Jorn and I, along with all of the members of the Illuminato programming team that he introduced, um, will be available here for any follow-up conversation. Thank you for coming, and we'll see you in June.